Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to become a graphic designer in 2023. This video is for complete beginners. Anyone who is thinking or wants to learn about graphic design, what it entails and how to do it, how to make it become a career choice, this is the video for you. A little bit of context. I've been a graphic designer for 10 years. I specialize in logo type design. That's word marks. I didn't go to university to learn design. I learned it all kind of. I Oh, I say it all by myself, but it's not really. But I learned from reading books, doing courses online, studying how to do it, and obviously critiquing myself over time. I've worked for clients such as James Janney, Adobe, Instagram, and other ones that I can't name right now, but I will later. So if you're looking to become a graphic designer, but you don't want to go to university or you just want to do it as a hobby, this video is for you. Okay, so number one, read books. Sounds really obvious, but there are so many books out there about graphic design that it's difficult to know which ones to read. I've made a video, I'll link it down below. Go and check that out. It goes into a bit more detail about the books that you should read that will help you. One book I can tell you to go and read is Form and Communication, and that will help you understand what typography is, how it was sort of created 6,000 years ago, and how it's implemented now. It'll give you a great foundation on what type does now and how you can implement typography correctly to make your designs look great. But what is graphic design? To a lot of my audience, that is a silly question because we already know, but to the layman, they may not really know. Do we just draw pictures all day? Do we just mess around in Photoshop? Yes and no. <laughs> Graphic design is a visual communication. That's kind of like the posters that you see. It's anything that uses type to convey a message or an illustration that conveys a message. We design information which is normally chaotically in the ether or this idea and we make it orderly, kind of like in a poster or in an instruction manual. Number two, surround yourself with great work. By that, I mean there are so many inspirational works out there online. There are websites like Behance, Dribble, design inspiration, even Instagram. It doesn't take a lot to look for them, but when you see one that you like that inspires you, save it. I use this program called Milanote, which is basically a mood boarding app. It's kind of like this online whiteboarding app that you can use to collaborate with people. Take your work that you've seen online or take that image that has inspired you to do something and save it on Milanote. A lot of what we do as graphic designers is take inspiration and then implement and mash it up with other work or ideas. So save your work. Number three, find a process that works for you and stick to it. Graphic design can be daunting because we don't know where to start, but essentially we all have a process that we go through. Whenever a client comes to us for a logo design, we have a systematic process that we hold to because we know it works. It generates ideas for us. So if you're worried that you're not creative enough, then don't be. This processes that I show on YouTube or my videos will help you come up with great ideas naturally. In fact, I've got a video down below, which I'll link, that will help you understand my logo design process and how we go around creating logos and just about any other design as well. An example of a good process might be taking a client's email, then mood boarding, mind mapping, initial sketches, refinement, presentation, refinement from feedback, final presentation, and then boom, done. That is a great process. This next step is fundamental in learning graphic design. Learn the principles and the fundamentals. There are between five and seven design principles. I like this acronym, CRAP. C, contrast. That is how bright or dark or how big or small something is in its form on paper or wherever it's used. Two, repetition. What do we repeat in our composition or in our design? Three, alignment. What should be aligned where? Four, proximity. Where should groupings be in the design? Five, appropriateness. Is the design appropriate for that industry or that client? For instance, you wouldn't use Comic Sans if you were designing a poster for a solicitor firm. It would just look hella weird. These principles can be searched for online, but I've got videos that I'll link down below that will help you understand each of these principles. The best graphic designers that you see in the world have spent years and years training their eye, and that eye comes through experience. What may look good now, won't look good to you in a few weeks time, I can guarantee you. If you take this seriously, you'll start to see yourself improving at an exponential rate. The next bit of advice is to start your portfolio. 
A portfolio is a place where you show off, you show your work and how you solve problems. It's not like a property portfolio. It's this is what I've done and this is how I can help you. If you click my website link down below, you will see our work and that is essentially our online portfolio. Now, every designer and every person should have a website to show their work and their worth. Squarespace is sponsoring today's video because I truly believe Squarespace to be one of the best website builders is out there for everyone. With thousands of award-winning, fully customizable templates, Squarespace lets you design the best portfolio or website that you need for you and your design work. Honestly, you can make a portfolio page on there and a contact me form. It's all white label, so they won't know it's from Squarespace. You can even have an online shop on there to make a little bit of side money if you're selling design templates, for instance. Squarespace is the one-stop shop. You can buy your domain, set up your professional email from that domain, Made on Squarespace. It's all one great big package. And if you're new to graphic design and you don't have a portfolio yet, you can go ahead right now by clicking the link and you can design the website for free and you get a free trial too, which is insane. And when you're ready to publish your portfolio, then that's when you get 10% off by clicking down below or using my code. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it happen. Now, if you're saying to yourself, well, I can't have a portfolio because I don't have any clients, then don't worry because when I started my portfolio, I actually had no clients either. I just made up a client and I made it very known that it was made up. If we strip back what a portfolio really is, it's a place where you show how to solve our problems and to show your work. Solving problems is what we do and we need to show clients that we can. Clients don't really care too much about the degree that you have or the fact that you've worked for this, this and this person. They want to see results on your portfolio of how you actually do the work that you do. That's how you gain trust. So there are two ways to get briefs or creative direction for your project. I would always use a brief though, because that's how you can show a client that you hit and achieved the goals that were set out in the brief. The first place is goodbrief.io. This place generates briefs for you, like tech briefs, logo briefs, poster briefs, UX briefs. And secondly, chat GBT. You can just ask it to create a brief for you. It does a pretty extensive job too. The next tip is to learn typography. Typography is king. That is everything to do with graphic design. It's all about communicating. You see the way that people lay out type? Very important. Graphic design is visual communication. Learning how to lay out your text, layout type, how big the font should be, where things should be placed, how to group blocks of text together. Now, the best ways to learn how to use typography correctly in the softwares is through courses that you see on Skillshare, but also on YouTube channels like mine and other people that are linked down below. You can learn it essentially all for free if you wanted to. There are so many resources out there for you to learn the fundamentals of graphic design and layout. Now, if you did enjoy this video and you would like to learn more about graphic design, let me know down below. I don't post many beginner videos, so if this did help you, subscribe to the channel for more. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. See you soon. Goodbye.